right. I'm going to start with the song. Hey, you, you, well, no. 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 Hey, you, you, be nature, as to me, and in me, and no. Lay you, we all lay you, we all lay you, we all lay you, we all lay you, you, we all lay you, Hey, you, you, we are numb. Hey, you, you, we are numb. Hey, you, you, we are numb. Hey, you, you, be me, die. I soon yawn in your men. Lay you, we all lay you, we all lay you, we all lay you. Hey, you, you, we are numb. Hey, you, you, we are numb. Hey! All right. So let's just jump right in here. All right. This book is dedicated to my maternal grandmother, Anita Ope, also called Carmel Jackson Rose. Carmel was of Southern Nisenan, Miwok, and Hawaiian descent. Orphaned at two, she was raised on the Auburn Indian Reservation until she married my grandpa, Dutch Rose, when she was 18. Carmel had six daughters who each had families of their own. She died at 94, outliving some of her own children. She helped instill in me the importance of culture, language, and family. It is an honor to acknowledge her with my story. All right. You're advancing slides, right, Hazel? Yes. And can you make that full screen? Oh, I'm doing it. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. Oh, we're both doing it. This is so exciting. Um, <laughs> no, it's not letting me. Okay. okay. We'll go to a different version of it so I can go full screen. This is exciting. I have to tell you guys, I'm a little nervous reading the book. I'm not a fluent Nisenan speaker. I am a student of the language. So um, I might re-say the words if I feel that I've spoken them, um, if I've mispronounced something. Our language was not a written language. Originally, it was only spoken. So it was linguists who came out and listened to the old Indian people talk and wrote down um, what they were saying. And so each person, so a linguist is someone who studies uh, languages. They study the sound that people make out of their mouth and then they've found symbols and ways to write those sounds down. So each of the linguists who came and wrote down Nisenan language has a different way of writing it down. So right now there are six I think six different ways that it's written and I get really confused sometimes <laughs> because it's a lot to learn but um, you'll see the the shapes and how some of most of the letters are English <clears throat> English you know letters that we can read and understand but the sounds are different um, this writing system is the way our friend and linguist Dr. Sherry Tatch who she illustrated the book and did the translations for me and um, so you will see the shapes and symbols that she has created to write the language down, to, um, to make us know how to make the sounds. So there you see some of the marks, you know, that we don't necessarily have in English. Ani to'opek, betem payom. Hedem ani to'opek. Nishinanimum Chunk Adi Kupem Anito Ope Hedemuki Kupem Kaudi Hedemukim Payum Kaudi Amampo Muki Payum Hoyadem Hoyadem 
munda muki payam haduku chulak lel sok ot pok ao aman pok pempo When in Pokelulu, Otom Yonakamu Bistisim Amampo Solimni Payomni Uda Dawisi Hupuna Bonoha Kesim Koton Nise Ben, Ben, Ben. Tup up, tup up, tup up, tup up, tup up. Moloch, Moloch, Moloch. Kappa, Kappa, Kappa. Kowo. Kowo, Kowo. Two seconds. Honim. Na, na, na. Born. Win my ho 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 Gantem Payoha Eptini Payoha Muse Yache. Bye, Mu. Bye, Mu. Sam Tutun. Sam Tutun. Sam Tutun. I love that page. Bete Mu Kum. Hatikwa Yapem Mehep Hunseim Ness Bulim Ness Use within us Hewe Dadawim Mum Mem Hewe Dadawim Mem Mumoyim That's the end. Mumuyum. That's that. All right. And do we have the last page? Can we go back? Are you okay to go back with each slide and we'll read it in English? And I have to keep telling myself it's okay. If I say it wrong, I can just re-say it. <laughs> I get really nervous because I don't want to disrespect my ancestors or the language by saying it wrong. And um, I think that's why I get so nervous to read it out loud. <laughs> um, and uh, and it's, I, I just have to keep telling myself, it's okay. It's okay to, to say it incorrectly and then and then try to say it right. And I, I just keep saying that to myself and I'm much better at memorizing things and uh, like when I sing or uh, if I memorize a story and it's really difficult for me to read in the language, you know, that's been written that was never written before. So um, anyway, all right. So if we can go back to the beginning, we'll, we'll do it again in English. Did you guys kind of follow the story? Did you see what was come, going along as she 
calls those names. Do you know who she's calling in? Did you see the animals come in? Well, okay, awesome. All right. Okay, let's go to the first page. So this is Hedem Anita Ope, Nishin Animum. This is Anita Ope. She is Nisinan. The forest is special to Anita Ope. This is her special place. This, oh, where are we? What do you go, Payom? This is her dance ground. Tonight is her. Uh, tonight is her first dance. These are her dance things. So the blue chulak is the headdress that uh, women wear when they dance. Lil is a clapper stick. Sokot is a, um, a moth cocoon rattle that's very special. And pokal is the white feather dance rope. Oh, that was a whistle, not a dancer, not a clapper stick. Um, the lel, that's a whistle. <clears throat> um, tonight is a special night. The stars are right. The Pleiades, or the seven sisters, shine brightly. Tonight, I sing, I dance. We bring our lost animal friends home. Step, step, step. Jump, jump, jump. Condor, condor, condor. There you go. Oh, I love that one. Um, grizzly bear, grizzly bear, grizzly bear. Eel, eel, eel. They're using his water. So cute. She is happy. Her heart is good. Now, now, now. Oh, English. Antelope, antelope, antelope. Eagle, elk, salmon. And ho, oh, that's like, yay, or gratitude, or like, yeah. And they say it a lot when the dancers are dancing, you yell, ho, oh, oh, like that. And <clears throat> um, it's a sign of respect for the dancers. Um, let's see, whoop, I lost my place again. Uh, oh, okay. Everyone danced. They danced with power. Look at them go. Um, it became cloudy. It began to rain. Firefly, firefly, firefly. The dream fades away. Stop, all of you. We remember your true names. We respect you and await your return. That's that. <laughs> the end. And then I'll read just a bit from the back. Um, let's see, um, <clears throat> I'll just share a little bit about my grandma. I wrote this in the back. Who is Ani Toope? Ani Toope is the Nisana name given to Carmel Jackson Rose by Jane Lewis. 
who was an old Indian lady that helped to raise her. Carmel was of Nisenan, Miwok, Hawaiian, and European ancestry. Her family lived in these lands for thousands of years before the discovery of gold and the devastating gold rush that followed. Carmel was orphaned at two years old when her mother, Mandy Jackson, died from tuberculosis. Carmel was raised on the Auburn Indian Reservation by a woman called Auntie, or Frances Williams. When the Indian agents came around to take all the Indian children to Indian boarding school, Auntie hid Carmel under her big skirts and told her to stay quiet and still. Thus, late Carmel was not taken to boarding school with the rest of the children, but instead, she and Auntie worked in the fields as migrant pickers to support themselves. Carmel lived a long life and had six daughters whose descendants strive to save their culture today. Carmel passed away at the age of 93, but her stories and memory will live for, will forever remain. And then um, I don't think I have to talk about me as the author, but I am the author. <laughs> I will read about our illustrator and linguist, Dr. Sherry Tatch. Dr. Tatch, PhD, has lived and worked in Nisenan country for more than half a century. Her initial degree was in studio art. Dr. Tatch was the executive director of a gallery and workshop space for artists in Sacramento, where she curated exhibitions, conducted international and national competitive shows, and held workshops for both professional artists and children's day camps. She was awarded her doctorate from the University of California, Davis, for her work, the Nisenan, Dialects and Districts of a Speech Community. Her firm, Indigenous Consulting Services, was established in 2006. Dr. Tatch serves state agencies, tribal peoples, and Native nations, providing interpretive design services, ethno-historical and cultural research, and creates archival collections for tribes. Language revitalization, preservation, and sustainable program development are her passion. She is an instructor of Nisenan, Central, and Northern Sierra Miwok. So she has been, because we don't have fluent speakers of our language anymore, um, my grandma sang songs, told stories, knew words. Um, she, uh, she knew a lot of words that little kids remember, like uh, poco, which is your butt, <laughs> and how, how to go to the bathroom, and uh, um, some cuss words, <laughs> things that little kids, I guess, like to remember from when they're little. Um, but she also remembered people's names, places, and um, for me, the songs. Um, let's see if I can remember one of her songs. Um, she sang a lullaby. Yoani, 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 yoana. Yoani, 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 yoana. Yoani, yoana. Yoani, yoana. Yoani, 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 yoana. Yoani, yoana. Yoani, yoana. That was one of the songs that I learned from her. Um, yeah, and so we we don't have fluent speakers. I, I didn't really get to sit and hear anybody sitting and speaking to one another in, in Nishinan. I heard one-sided. I heard grandma talking and telling stuff. Um, one actually one time I heard her talking with one of my cousins and uh, they were trying to remember words. What was that word, Carmel? And they would go back and forth and try to remember um, words about what seemed to be just random words they could remember. But with the help of Dr. Tatch, um, she worked with William, uh, William Shipley, Richard Smith, um, some of the other linguists that had worked heavily in the language when we had fluent speakers alive. So uh, we spend time in the archives. There's still a lot of research that has not been done. Um, last time we were in the archives, we found another verb that we didn't have before, and it was the action to break break sticks over your knees, um, and then found a whole bunch of language just around the use of fire, the use of sticks, 
And, you know, back then they used sticks a lot. So there was a whole entire vocabulary of sticks for brittle sticks and bendable sticks and <laughs> all these kind of things. The action where you throw the stick in your pack when you're gathering sticks. Um, because it was such an important part of culture and they were constantly gathering in the forest for burnable things. Um, fire, there was always a fire going, always. And, um, you know, we don't do that today and thus lay all the stuff on the floor of the forest, you know, that could be picked up and burned by people for everyday uses isn't obviously being used anymore. So um, that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why the forest is in bad shape. Um, and then after picking up all the usable burnable things in the forest, um, and of course all the big animal herds that were here that would go around the forest and do their thing, um, the forests and the land was always burned. So they burned the grasses they, to keep the insects away. Uh, they burned to keep, mostly to keep the floor clean so when the acorn, wait, acorns fell on the ground or when the pine nuts fell that, um, you know, you could actually pick them up. <laughs> it's kind of treacherous out there right now to do so. But um, so I'm really happy. I'm happy that we met Dr. Tatch. I'm happy that we're revitalizing the language. Um, one thing I love to share is that, you know, because my grandpa was taking a boarding school, he didn't, I'm pretty sure he spoke it as a first language, but they didn't share it anymore. They didn't speak it anymore after the boarding schools took that away from them and did not allow them to speak their language. Um, so my mom doesn't speak. She knew some words and songs, obviously from her mom and dad, but they didn't converse. And so uh, one day though, I heard my daughter, Rena, um, she was upstairs and mom was downstairs and we'd been doing language class and mom had seen a squirrel outside and she said, Rena, what's the name for squirrel again? And Rena yells down, John Bao, grandma. And she's like, said something back like chan down she's like no chambao and she's like chambao yeah and i was like it was really funny because you know we yell through our house all the time um but like later that really hit home for me like my daughter is teaching my mom words of our language that um you know was just destroyed so so quickly and so fast and um but that also while it's kind of sad it's also really awesome and i just i got the biggest kick out of it <laughs> like that's so great and so we know a lot of animal words you know um obviously in the book uh she's calling these animals some of which are almost extinct uh, i know our california grizzly bear is not in california anymore there are none it's on our flag but the, where is it and for us in culture, grizzly bear is one of the biggest teachers there is for morality and teaching you how to be a good person. These animals are the ones that teach us how to be. And, um, and so the condor, also the great California condor was almost extinct. I think there were 18 left in the wild and someone went out and captured them all up, helped them to reproduce and have babies safely. And then now they're being released back into the world. And I think there's over a hundred now. Um, some of which have been born free and haven't been raised in captivity. So that's really exciting. But the salmon, there used to be huge elk herds, elk herds here in Antelope, which a lot of people don't know because they've been missing from the landscape for so long. And um, the salmon, of course, are having a hard time because of the dams. They can't get back up the river after they go to the ocean. They can't get back up to their home where, they're, where they come from. And so I feel passionate about the animals and I feel passionate about this story where you find out in the end she's really just dreaming this is a dream she's having so some of the women in our tribe were, were dreamers it's what they did like you got all of your songs and stories um, your connection with your ancestors when you dream and so this is grandma um, dreaming or grandma's character I suppose dreaming um, about this dance where they all get to come in the forest and they all come as she calls them and they dance and they all have their their dance gear on and they're just out there doing their thing and it really is just to bring attention to the animals who you know humans aren't always the smartest ones on the planet like animals animals have their part and they're just as important as people are and so that's what this book is about is about bringing back bringing back the, at least the attention that there's a bunch of people missing from our our community and they're the animals so i